I'm sure many of you wonder, what does it mean to have 2% of my genome be Neanderthal, right? Uh, that's, a, that's a common question I get. And, and I think there's some important things to think about. So from a, just from a species level perspective, from a paleontological evolutionary perspective, some people have suggested that means that Neanderthals and modern humans actually aren't separate species. We're all human beings. And to one extent, I would agree that Neanderthals are, are a kind of human. Their, their brains were as large of us as, you know, they're from the same age. They were very competent, brilliant, successful hunter-gatherers in many ways who were capable of doing the same things that modern humans were doing at the same time. But on the other hand, if any of you were Neanderthal in the audience, even from here with the stage lights, I could probably tell that you would be profoundly different than any of you actually are, right? You would stick out like a sore thumb. There are, there are, there are many profound differences, and, and, and we can show that even though there was interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans, thanks to David's work and others, and others like Svante Pabo, it, that, that hasn't had much of an effect. And in, and in effect, when we look at other closely related species, we see the same phenomenon. For example, we know that in, in Africa, there are many different species of, of baboons. Uh, there are many species of all kinds of monkeys. And we know that those species often interbreed on an occasion, but those offspring of those interbreeding events, the same thing happens that David just described. The, the, the percentage of one versus the other uh, ancestry seems to decline rapidly because there are negative consequences to that interbreeding. The offspring have less what we call biological fitness. And it, the same occurs, appears to be the case with Neanderthals. So I think from a, from, a, from a kind of a philosophical perspective, the evidence that Neanderthals and modern humans interbred doesn't really change, our, uh, to me, the notion that modern humans, that Homo sapiens is a separate species. But nonetheless, we walk around carrying, you know, 2% of our genes that come from Neanderthals. And that has other important and interesting implications. Um, but to understand that, we also need to understand another vitally important fact, or two important facts. So one of those facts is that the variation that exists in the world, um, most of that variation doesn't exist with, within, uh, between populations, that most of the variation exists within populations. So if, if we were to imagine we were just one population right now and the rest of the world were suddenly to die in some kind of horrible attack, right? We would still preserve in this room about 86%, 85% of all the genetic variation that exists in our species. Another way of saying that is 85% of the variation, the genetic variation that exists in the world exists in, anyone's, in any one population. So the, 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 the things that make populations different from each other are much less than the things that make us different from each other within a population by about a factor of six. And the other important thing to remember is that those genes have effects on our phenotype, on our bodies, but most of the phenotypes that we, that we carry are complex phenotypes. They're the result of hundreds of genes of a very small effect. They're genes that are rare, um, and they have strong interactions with the environment. So it doesn't mean that, you know, 2% of your nose is Neanderthal. It doesn't work that way, um, even if 2% of your genome is, is, is Neanderthal.